The boats in this edition of the Ocean Race are the fastest in the event's history. And the course is no less extreme, with a full month in the Southern Ocean and plenty of wind and waves on the other legs as well. What does all this mean? Well, I caught up with Damien Sagan, who's been sailing on the last edition on Biotherm. And he said something I couldn't get out of my mind. Do you think the modern boats are getting it wrong? Do you think there's, there's they're too much about speed and not enough about comfort? I think that, yeah. because you need comfort. Why? When you are alone or when you have full crew, when you are sleeping, you have to sleep yeah. well. Yeah. So you need some comfort. That got me thinking, where is the line between speed and survival? Falling onto carbon, that's like falling onto steel. I'm not too sure what kind of difference this is going to make. If it can be comfortable, great, but at what cost? People that are seasick, when they go in the sea, they're not seasick oh, anymore. Oh, really? The boats are demanding, but it makes them also really interesting. We're not invincible, and these boats are so violent. Now, we've always had our sailors getting hurt. That's just the nature of adventure. But normally it's a trip or a fall or a slip or, okay, a, a boom coming at you or, or a sheet sweeping you off your feet. But these days with the Amokas, there's something that seems a little new. The Amokas will go incredibly fast, but they will also stop unbelievably quickly. This time it's the sailors flying into the boat, their bodies literally being thrown through the air. And when that happens and there's injuries on board, there's somebody that they look to call. My name's uh, Dr. Spike Briggs. Uh, I've been the medical advisor, chief medical advisor for the, uh, for the ocean race for the past, I don't know, probably about 16 years or so. How often are the sailors getting bumped, bruised, smashed around? I mean, how often do you guys get a call? So we run a 24-7 uh, telemedical advice service for, for over a thousand clients worldwide. Uh, and certainly when there's a race going on, uh, we, get, we get a lot of calls. They're calling mostly about, uh, about accidents uh, on, the, uh, on the boat, uh, both uh, you know, with, uh, for impact trauma and, uh, and uh, attrition and accidents with the, uh, when they're cooking food as well. So they've got hot fluids on a very unstable platform. So like for instance, in the last race, we had quite a bad scald at one point. How, how have the injuries changed? Because obviously we've gone from loads of iterations of the boats, the boats are getting faster and the Amokas are violent. It's a rough, rough ride. Do you see that change in what you're being asked to help with? And we know from analyzing uh, V65 data from previous races that about 50% of injuries happen below decks and 50% happened above decks. Uh, and we know that the person most at risk is the bowman, followed by the helm, and the person least at risk was the skipper. But with the Mocha 60s, I think there's been a bit of a shift of, of injuries because they spend the, the vast majority of the time down below or in, the, in, the, in a covered cockpit, so they can't see what's, uh, what's coming. And it's just through a uh, variety, of, variety of things, so big decelerations, brooches, and hitting, uh, and hitting uh, unidentified objects as well. I mean, is there any way, without being too gruesome, is there any way that you can hmm. explain, you know, what does that do to the body? I mean, I'm thinking about getting thrown into a brick wall, but just the relentless nature of that movement. I mean, falling onto, falling onto carbon is, uh, is pretty hard. Uh, and also falling onto an edge of carbon is, uh, is even worse. That's like falling onto, you know, falling onto steel. It's exactly, exactly the same type of thing. So if you broke, for instance, you could be in a bunk on one side and then you can fall 16 feet, you know, over five meters onto hard carbon on the opposite side of the boat as the boat tips onto its side, which would be completely unpredictable. You know, just happens just, just like that. As a general rule, an injury tends to be worse the more energy involved in the accident. The faster you go, if you have an accident, the injuries will be worse. We wondered what would be a nice way of showing that kind of force. How much energy is there in a serious impact? Well, we thought the best thing to do would be to use our lunch. This is around about five, six kilos, so there's a reasonable amount of weight. And what we've got to do now is get it up to 30 knots. Well, 
I can't throw it that fast. And we did think about a catapult, but that might backfire. So the easiest solution is to come up here to the cliffs just outside Alicante and find a suitable drop, about 12, 14 meters. And that means that when this reaches the floor, it will be doing 30 knots. That's a worst case scenario. On our boat, we're not really gonna go from 30 to zero in an instant. So this is gonna show how much energy there is, peak energy, just in that moment. I'm not gonna be an idiot. I'm not gonna go too near the edge. I'm gonna roll it off. Okay, good luck, Melanie. Three, two, one. Okay, that's, that's pretty dramatic and that's pretty messy. Uh, the melon doesn't have a, a layer of skull underneath it. So it was always going to be on the extreme end. But it goes to show just how violent that moment is. There's so much energy, so what can we do? Well, one thing that we can do is to have some form of cushioning, something to soak up that impact. If you go to a car, you're thinking crumple zones, airbags. I mean, the front of a car is designed that in a crash, it sacrifices itself, soaking up that energy so that for you, you can walk away from it. Now, you shouldn't put a crumple zone into a yacht. It's not gonna work. And you can't wrap the entire yacht in foam padding. It's just not practical. But what our Amoka sailors are doing is they are wrapping themselves, either with impact padding on their bodies or just with simple cushioning on their head. I'm not too sure what kind of difference this is going to make, but let's see what happens. Here we go. All right. So it's made a little bit of a mess. And obviously it was going to do that. I mean, let's be honest, you know, this isn't as tough as our skin, our skin can take a lot more than this. And of course, we've got a skeleton underneath as well. I mean, that's, that's not gonna do much, is it? <laughs> I mean, that, that's not gonna do much, but they're not really designed for that, are they? They're designed for the, for the bumps and the scrapes. I mean, that's why if you're riding your motorcycle, you wear a full-on crash helmet. These sorts of hats are great for stopping the scrapes and the bangs of pulling your body through the boat they're not gonna help you in, a, in an impact like we've kind of, like we've done here. Well, this is just a little bit of fun to show what would happen with our lunch if we were in a, if we were in a moment like that. So the fleet at the moment in the Amokas are building things into their boats where they can have positions, where they're in constant connection with the boat, maybe a little bit of padding. And if they do crash stop, it's spread over a few moments. In Lorient, you'll see some very interesting designs. What's the problem that you haven't yet solved? I mean, I, I, it's just the whole comfort on board, whether that's noise. There's, we're quite regularly, when we start going fast, seeing over 100 decibels in the boat, which is basically a loud nightclub, but non-stop. I mean, we've got noise-canceling headphones, earmuffs, and we, you try it, but it's not very comfortable to have that on 24 hours a day. Um, so there's that, and then there's just trying to find a spot in the boat where you're not being smashed into something or bouncing around, or you're comfortable, or you can eat peacefully, and. It's probably peace, peace and quiet. It's what you miss. <laughs> probably the hardest thing on the boat, yeah. What about crash helmet, body armor? I mean, has that been, is that on the cards? And yeah, so we've got crash helmet and body armor. Wearing it 24 seven gets quite tiring. You can't move around as you yeah. like. So um, I know we had body armor on hull sim for the, the ocean race and we put it on for, for maneuvers or if you're going stacking in the bow or if right. you had to go look at something. But living in it, it's just, it, no one did it. It's just. Maybe we need to force ourselves to get used to it, but the problem is, is 99% of the time you don't need it. We've got the gear, we'll put it on if we can feel the need for it, but it, we st I, I struggle in any way at the moment of finding when there's the right moment to put it on. My arms are tired. This is the navigation chair, the navigation station, plus living room, plus bedroom, plus kitchen, plus everything. I mean, I'm very comfortable here. Yeah. The idea is to be comfortable. I mean, right now you're comfortable because it's flat water and, yeah, we're, and we're, this is true. We're, we're chatting with a camera, but um, <laughs> when, it's, when it's gnarly, it, it's good to be kind of 
in yeah. some way you can't go flying. So in terms of like sleeping, is this where you sleep? Where, where do you have that you actually so go to for comfort? You can either sleep here, so if you put your legs up here, you can lean back a bit. I do? Yeah, yeah, go for it, yeah. That's kind of, that can be your kind of a fairly relaxed spot and you can Can I pull angle. the cord? Yeah, yeah, go for it, yeah. And you can find your... Um, Ooh, hey. There we go. You can oh, yeah, find your comfort spot. No, that's nice. And then on either side, we've got a bunk with a mattress where you can have a proper lie down into a sleeping bag. Hang on. <laughs> it takes a bit of getting used it to. It does take a bit. I'm so glad <laughs> you said that. I mean, at one level, it's remarkable how... At the, at the tip of your fingers, everything yeah. is. But at another level, it's... It's roughing it at an extreme... Yeah, yeah extreme definition. Yeah. You kind of set out for that, so it's... It's part of the plan. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, we're not, we're not, you can have set out with that as an expectation, so you deal with it, sort of thing. Is it, but is that something that actually motivates you in that way of like, I don't want climbing Everest to be easy. I don't want sailing around the world. I don't want to compete at this level and kind of go, yeah, it was lovely, actually. No, it's not my way of seeing things, but it's more like, look, what, if it can be comfortable, great. But right, at okay. what cost? Is, that, is it going to take up more space, more weight? Is it going to be comfortable, it's going to add performance, or is it just a luxury that's not at all necessary? But if it's got a necessity on board and it will add to performance, then yeah, go for it. So you want a funny fact? Yeah, go on. People that are seasick, when they go in the sea, they're not seasick anymore. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Because we've sailed together and you will know that I am <laughs> sick as a dog, and yeah. that's, oh, that's good. So I can switch it from one Ooh. side to the other. Yeah, I need the to, head is to put really, some padding on that. But that's really important, can, though, to have that, yeah, though, isn't it? That's yeah. what it's all about. The, the oh, problem man. is that we're not allowed to sit in it now because you fall asleep too much. <laughs> it's too comfy. Yeah, so when, we're, really? when it's our shift, uh, we, we stand up and we do the trimming and we do the computer with the, the keyboard on the seat. We're that's not, we're amazing. Not, yeah, otherwise it's, it's too comfy. You fall asleep. And I love the fact that you're also using it. That's uh, the new, uh, that's the newest design. The new position. Yeah. In the uh, jet board position. You've got a little bit of, a little yeah, bit of movement yeah. with it potentially, yeah. but also and it, it we don't really back. knock into it because the yeah. seat kind of protects it. What have you done to your boat to mean that you're not getting bashed and smashed and the noise. How do you live on board? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the answer. <laughs> we have a, a seat inside, so with, a, I don't know the term in English. Oh, hydraulic. Yeah, 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 meta, I, yeah. I, yeah. hydraulic uh, yeah. On, the, on the seat. So. Is it facing forwards? Is it facing backwards? Now it's facing backward. Yeah. Because uh, forward, <laughs> I've done it in the last uh, <laughs> transatlantic and I, oh. I jumped three meters in front. So it was not a good idea. <laughs> Want to see inside? Can we see? Yeah. Is that okay? Oh, I like the, <laughs> the grip is really good. <laughs> I mean, it's so different down here from some of the, the yeah. new boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've done the, the, <laughs> the ocean race in Biotherm. Where? At Britain, it's this high. <laughs> yeah, <on me>. yeah. <laughs> but but, like, but you have a proper bed. Yeah. You've got the, the, the rugby have the impact helmet <laughs> and and it's it's when would you use it? How often do you put it on your head? When I'm inside the boat. Every oh, time. Right. Every time. Every time. And have you ever been wearing that and you have hit a wave and bang bang and you think, oh I'm yes. lucky. Especially when I go to uh, to check the sails in right. front of the boat. Yeah. So here it's uh, you you have light, etc. but it's completely black. In the front of the boat. No, it's uh, dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you've experienced some big, uh, some big stops, shall we say, in the Amoka, in the ocean race, you know. And I wonder how much those moments stay with you. Does it make you fearful in the future, or is it just life of being an Amoka sailor? <laughs> Uh, I think it's a risk uh, you accept, but for sure, when you are going like faster than 20 knots, it's always something you have in your mind. Like if I if I stop suddenly or if I hit something now, it can be really yeah, it can be dangerous uh, for the boat for myself. So yeah, we also you, you see that more and more now on the footage coming off the boats. Uh, we wear more and more helmets uh, yeah, as soon as, as the conditions require it. Uh, yeah, just to anticipate uh, if if there is a, a problem. How important is it to get? just a few more minutes of good sleep. Yeah, yeah, we, so we did a few tries uh, on the last years and uh, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, I mean, if you don't have the good uh, gear to sleep on these boats, you don't manage to sleep. So or you really struggle to get to sleep. So that's, uh, yeah, that's an important area to work on. 
Uh, most of us, I think we always, always uh, wear like earplugs to be able to sleep as well. So it's all of these little things you really have, need to have on board, not forget to, to have if you want to be just able to, to relax and um, recover and get, get new energy. How bad is the noise? Do you, ha do you have to play music to kind of distract yourself? <laughs> what can you do with it? I really can't sleep if I don't have earplugs, except if it's really light yeah. conditions. So that's, yeah, that's the example. Some people play music, some, yeah, it really depends, but for sure you have to cut a bit the noise. But then how do you wake up? Do you have a very loud alarm? Yeah, so on all the boats we have uh, yeah, really loud alarms that we can set up with a different time we choose before we go to bed. And we also can set up uh, alarms uh, if there are wind changes uh, in the strength, in the direction that will also ring if, if uh, we have to react. There must be a part of it that's scary. I'm sure fun, but scary. Really hard work, very little sleep, um, hard to cook, hard to get comfortable. How, do you still enjoy it enough? You know, you know like, like, have you come close to going, okay, I'm stopping? Yeah, I think sometimes, yeah, for sure, the boats are, are really demanding, uh, especially single-ended. So yeah, sometimes you wonder why you're here. But I think we probably all wonder that uh, once. But then it's uh, yeah about finding the good compromises where you're happy with, uh, yeah, you manage to still keep the boat under control. The boats are demanding, but it makes them also really interesting. There are a lot of parameters you can manage and play on. And that's also, yeah, trying to, to improve on that, understand the boat better and managing, managing them better, which makes it really interesting. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be curious about the races that we've got coming up. We've got the Ocean Race Europe in 2025, and then of course the full edition of the race in 2027. Now, the next event on the calendar is the Ocean Race Europe, August. And there's a lot of buzz about that event at the moment. We put out a video um, a little while ago about some of the challenges about getting a route down for that race around Europe as a coastal edition. Well, since then, we've had some announcements. We know that Kiel is going to be the start, and we know that we're going to be going back to Geneva in Italy. Now, of course, Geneva was the place for the grand finale of the last edition of the Ocean Race, and Germany has hosted us before. We've had a finish there in 2005, and in the last edition of the Ocean Race, we had a very memorable flyby. And the sailors in the Amoka fleet are certainly very excited about what the Ocean Race Europe could mean. DMG Mori. セリングチームスキッパーの白石工場で、DMG森スキップチームとして次のオーシャンレースにぜひチャレンジしたいと考えてます。ぜひザオーシャンレースにねチャレンジできればと思ってます。Last time was an incredible experience, crazy, but I love that. So my plan for after the Vendée Globe is to do the the Ocean Race Europe with my boat. And uh, after, if I can find uh, another boat or take part to a crew for the Ocean Race, yeah, I will do it <laughs> for sure. The Ocean Race and all the races that the Ocean Race provide um, are really exciting for the Amoka class. I managed to get a ride on BOSM and um, for me it was crucial for a Vendée Globe entry to have done that leg in the Ocean Race. So I, yes, I'm really looking forward to uh, crewed races in the future just for the pure pleasure of enjoying these boats going really really fast trying to break records uh, racing like that with uh, a fleet around you is even more uh, exhilarating is the word we know we want to do the ocean race europe next year uh, we'll see how that fits into the schedule with the details, but it, it's definitely something we want to do. I raced on the Ocean Race Europe previously and a few times on the Ocean Race as well, and I, I still love those races. So uh, even if it's not with my boat, I hope I will be able to, to take part uh, to, to the Ocean Race uh, races. While the teams are working hard to get to the start line for the Ocean Race, there's going to be some big announcements coming in the next few weeks about some partners for the Ocean Race Europe and the full round the world race. Keep your eyes glued to our social media channels. For all the sailors lining up to do the race in 25 and 27, they'll be thinking about those big crashes and bangs, but also just the act of living on board is tough. We're just out on a nice sail today. But imagine if you were in full race mode at the moment. Everyone's kind of spread around the boat. They'd all have their jobs to do. They'd all be working pretty hard. But one of the things that would have to be happening is you'd, you'd have to drag those sails 
away occasionally and they might be at the back of the boat, they might need to come out the hatch at the front, you're going to have big heavy lumps of equipment and it's not far that you've got to move them, it's only a few metres down this way but just check out the route that you'd have to do. If you wanted to pull something through here, you'd have to find your way, you're going to go underneath this, if it fits, more likely going over, you've got to avoid the handles, you don't really want to disturb all of the equipment that you've got cleated and kind of tucked away here. Then you're going to have to get it through here, the main hatch, and into the navigation room. And then we've got to get it round the uh, instrument bulkhead here. So probably it's going to be you going underneath here, and you're going to have to get into a uh, difficult position because from this point forward, you're going to want to try and tuck it right the way in front. There's an awful lot of stuff to avoid here. Dragging it through this way, inevitably banging your head. Oh, there's a better way to do this, but I'm committed. Ah, oh, it's slippery. So now I'm into the bow section, where up here most of the sails are stored. Now, there is a hatch at the front. This is why we see those sailors using it, but that is not always an option, depending on what the conditions are like. And we've only traveled, what? maybe five, maybe six meters. But just doing that journey is gonna take so much of your energy away. And this is what we mean about trying to find ways of getting that energy back, whether it's eating, whether it's sleeping, but my word, you're really gonna have to do it. The simple act of changing sails is a real energy drainer. One of those things that never changes, pulling heavy kit around the boat in the Southern Ocean in the worst of the weather. And if you come down here to Alicante, to the Ocean Race Museum, you get a chance to step on board a piece of history. This is Brazil One, and it's set up to show people what it was like to be sailing those boats back in the day and just how much they have changed to that modern Amoca fleet. But all of these boats, hauling that equipment or whether you're just wrapped up in your bunk, recovering from the latest crash stop, you're gonna to need to conserve that energy. You're gonna to need to put energy back in, and that means eating, and eating a lot. Herein lies another problem, cooking time. And at that point, it's just a case of boiling some water, getting it in, and getting those ingredients nice and hydrated again. But then also, when this kettle's ready, I've got the problem of taking boiling hot water from a red hot kettle and pouring it into this packet. And that's a real problem. It's another great chance for injury. On any sailboat, you'll look at your hands after a while and you go, wow, I've cut myself. I don't really realize how I cut myself. Where have you banged your head? Where have you grazed your knee? Where have you cut yourself? Um, I burnt my hands a bit on rope, but that's kind of... That's just the part it. of the course, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, well, and I got a massive scar on my face, got hit by a winch handle, but that, that was on a, that was on a system. Not, uh, I was on a trime ran, but the same sort of system oh, as this. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, they can bite sometimes, but you try and learn from each one and avoid it for the next time. It just feels like the class is just the perfect example of people learning from what's come before and then the next one and then the next one and then the next one and the next one. Purely prototype. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've got an idea, you put it in place, you check it against all the design yeah, yeah, and you yeah. move on. It's amazing. I think the designers are having a lot of fun as well because yeah. they learn a lot with those designs. Do you think, in, in, in terms of the ocean race, do you think the designers are watching the ocean race as closely as the sailors in terms of the footage or, you know, as a, as a, as a testing bed for some of those ideas? Do you think the designers will be influenced by what has worked in the ocean race? Oh, no doubt, because it's going to be the same thing that works for the Vendée. Yeah. In the last Vendée, I, I got thrown in a collision, I got thrown into a bulkhead and I, I broke two ribs. So for me, that was a big scare and a big kind of uh, uh, jump to reality that we're not invincible and these boats can put us in situations that are a bit tricky. I don't nosedive so much, but um, even downwind it slams. Slamming all the time. Um, and you're just so... Um, uh, what's the word? Tense. Tense the whole time. That yeah. I have trouble eating because, uh, like oh, my wow. poor deep like inside muscles yeah. are so tense that I barely can swallow what I'm eating sometimes. So for me, it was uh, about finding a way of um, shock absorbing yeah. inside the boat so that I could um, s eat and be a little, have a little bit of a um, more normal life. If I can make myself a little bit. Uh, more comfortable, yeah. uh, then I'm not going to get so scared. So I've accepted weight gain yeah. because uh, we've put a 
real shock absorber with a ram and a spring and uh, my seat is like in a in a big uh, offshore powerboat now yeah um, and I'm fully shock absorbed and it's so comfortable and so <laughs> it holds me so well and like you know I can sleep and I can so work you, so you and sleep in the chair that's the idea we even molded it around my um, my uh, noise Wait. reducing <laughs> headphones so they fit in what is a case of I got five more minutes sleep that's enough you know how do you know that it's worked? Sometimes it's just even rest and to be able to like relax as many muscles as possible. Yeah, release the tension. And, yeah, release the tension, think about something else. And so that's the idea of that is to be able to make the most of those moments to actually kind of shut an eye a little bit and get, yeah, like you said, another five or ten minutes sleep here and there. And um, But for properly relaxed sleep, not stressed out um, nightmare sleep. <laughs> Stress level's so high, you can't even swallow your food. And there's so much innovation going on in the Amoka fleet, but a lot of those sailors have now done the ocean race. And you can see that shift in putting the needs of the sailor first. And while the technology is incredibly impressive, that important aspect of looking after the crew, making sure that people can sleep, um, avoid injury, concentrate on the dull moments, but also ride out those peaks in adrenaline. That's gonna be such an important thing when searching for those little edges of performance. And all the tech and all the sail design and all the important foil innovations are gonna be crucial, but the key difference, the thing that's really gonna matter when you're pushing hard to win this race are the sailors you have on board and how they're able to perform. <laughs>